Talk Show. Recorded live. Well, hello everyone. Um, crash course in Talk Show. <laughs> I, I apologise to all of you. All right, so uh, we're on. Um, I want to thank Gre- uh, Gretchen uh, for um, stepping in, and I know that with any of these kind of technologies, uh, it can be up and down. Look, it's a great technology, uh, but it can be frustrating when things don't work. Um, I, I just want to start by explaining that tonight, unfortunately, Terry um, can't host, and I want to send out my thoughts and prayers to, to Terry. And I want to thank all of those who have stayed on the call uh, despite the technical issues. And uh, I also want to thank you uh, for, uh, for being on the call tonight. So we'll start a bit late and I will extend out the call a bit longer and I think I'll be okay in terms of being able to unmute people for uh, live questions. So the first thing is that uh, the format tonight and, and welcome all of you who are on the call tonight. The format tonight uh, for Wednesday, the uh, 25th of May, is that I want to cover a few things for the first hour. And then for the second hour, uh, what we normally do is answer any kind of questions that you have in regards to Eucadia, One Heaven, uh, or anything that uh, you're hearing in terms of University of Eucadia. So to answer those questions, I ask if you can please uh, type the questions into the chat and uh, when you do answer in the chat um, please put the word in caps question and I will answer your question straight away. Uh, For uh, the um, queries for those that are logged in uh, if you can do star 8 and I will try and get you up. So thanks for your patience and, uh, and let's start. Well, there are a few things to cover tonight and what I'd like to to start with is to let you all know what has been worked on for the past uh, couple of weeks on a package that was sent to Pope Benedict the 16th, to the head of the Jesuits, to the head of the Franciscans. And this is a package that is being sent ahead of what is called Pentecost the Feast of the Pentecost coming up on June the 12th. So I want to explain to the significance of that, especially to the Trust Romanus Pontifex and to the collapsing of the Sesta KVs. It has direct relevance to all that we've been doing on the ecclesiastical deeds and I want to explain why. The other thing I want to cover is this issue of the Illuminati, the New World Order and the theme that the Illuminati truly is like the Emperor with no clothes. I want to raise this because I received a number of emails from you about another version of a YouTube talking about the plans of the Illuminati and while we've spoken about it before I do want to come back again and talk about some clear understandings that I hope I can share with you about why and who and what we are talking about. These words get thrown around, New World Order, Illuminati, Jesuits, connections, families, bloodlines, but unfortunately what gets missed is the background. Who are we talking about? What are we talking about? So I want to cover that. I want to share with you about the uh, issues of cognitive law and how that's progressing. And again, it feeds into this issue of the Illuminati disinformation. I want to show you uh, and and share with you some of the great insights that are coming in preparing that and why it's taking a bit more time. So again, thank you for putting up for the technical difficulties that started with the call. And before we start, let me cover something that happened uh, this week. It is a question of competence. Now in these conversations over the last uh, few months, and I thank all of you who have come on to these calls and asked questions and and listened and shared, we have had an underlying theme, and that theme is competence. When we're dealing with the bar, we need to remember that they have been around for hundreds of years. 
the guilt. And that they have had hundreds of years to perfect their magic. And that in that period, there has been precious few that have stood the ground and beaten them at their own game. In fact, if you took six months ago or even 12 months ago, if I said to you or someone said to you that there are people around the world who are entering their courts and by standing honourably, respectfully, intelligently and competently that they were stopping the courts at their magic, we'd be talking about a handful of people, an absolute handful of people, like like mythological gods of the ancient Greeks and Romans. Now, as we understand what drives their magic, we understand now truly for the first time that every single court case is in fact the sacrament of penance. And if someone says to you, that's rubbish, then remind them, what does pro se cutis mean? Pro se cutis, it's in front of us, pro se cuta. One standing in our own skin. Someone who is committing a fraud against God, claiming to be you in the court, confessing on your behalf. They're in plain sight. So we have learned a huge amount by sharing information, by learning from really intelligent people and brave people who now have hopefully a new lease of life and vigour in terms of dealing with this organised criminal cartel. And competence is a key part of that. Now, what I wanted to raise was this. There was a court case today where a judge said to the defendants, I find you incompetent. By the way, this was before a psych evaluation. Incompetent. Well, what do we mean by competency? So I want to refer you back to the canons of positive law. And in the canons of positive law, we make it two things very clear. We explain that competence is the concept of being fit, proper, qualified to produce and argue, reason through knowledge and skill of law, logic, rhetoric, against opposing arguments. And most importantly, most importantly, we say that when you evoke your right, your will as a divine immortal spirit, a divine person is always competent. So just as we explained the other day that the system of psychology has developed its system to a point now that when the DSM, the Manual of Mental Disorders is launched next year. Every single man, woman and child as they live their lives will in fact be exposed as claiming to have some kind of mental disorder. And today, the judge that made these comments made it absolutely clear that in the minds of their system they consider God, they consider the divine, they consider any kind of honourable standard as incompetence. Now, I'm going to come back to cognitive law, but I just wanted to remind people that we are progressing tremendously, but we are dealing with people in positions who have absolutely no idea of the law, of argument, of reason, and they are absolutely clinging on by their fingernails. The emperor has no clothes. So let's go through the first three points and I'll come back to the relevance of what I've just said about competence in a moment. It'll make sense when I get through to cognitive law and it certainly makes sense when I get to the Illuminati. Before I go a bit further, I just want to also spend out and send out a, a prayer there's been tr tremendous death in America this week tragedy this week with the tornadoes and whilst 
it is important always to provide relevant information to you all to help those that are in need to continue to become more and more competent in the law I think it is always important to stop for a moment and, and reflect that we do not wish ill on anyone we do not wish ill on any part of the world and when there is tragedy and when there is sadness as compassionate beings as beings that are better than those that have themselves in such an arrogant and, and ignorant uh, state of mind that we actually say a prayer and we reflect on those and the families that are suffering now because of that so I send out my thoughts and prayers to all those who are suffering now because of the tragedies across America with this terrible season of tornadoes okay point one this week the package to the Roman pontiff to the Jesuits and to the Franciscans and by the way if I'm jumping around I'm sorry because today I'm <laughs> finding myself uh, organizing the call and, and also uh, speaking so I'm sorry if I'm a bit jumpy today but one of the things that you'd be aware all of you hopefully be aware and those that will listen later on is that we in the ecclesiastical deed poll used a ancient principle upon which the Illuminati the Roman system the system of Mithra the system of control considered the most sacred and important element and it was the covenant of blood the sanctity of blood blood being the ultimate currency blood being the ultimate seal and so it being the most important principle to defy this to dishonor this anyone in their system is a heinous act according to their own rules and if ignored by many particularly in senior positions is such a spiritual dishonor that that alone should be enough to cause the walls to crumble and collapse because the foundation of the modern world of the world of control that we live in is based on the covenant of blood the garments rolled in blood as Benedict XVI said at Christmas the third age of Mithra the third Reich of Mithra so when we've sent the ecclesiastical deed poles around what we have been doing is that we have been evoking that foundation and saying we know by your rules that blood is the most important element sacred element that binds us to your law to the higher divine we know this because under Leviticus you make it clear that the most sacred process is the act of atonement and it is a blood ritual just as the act of birth as it is defined on your sacraments is a blood ritual just as the act of the Eucharist is a blood ritual your most sacred acts are blood rituals we know this and we evoke this and if you dishonor this you dishonor your entire system without question history being our judge forever it is sealed well you all know I hope that with the issue of hundreds of ecclesiastical deeds and hundreds of deeds of dishonor and follow-up deeds with blood seals to registrars and state officials to national officials around the world there can be, be no doubt at all that the existing officials officers and those in charge of the law have dishonored the law their law to the foundation they have dis